Hello and welcome to another edition of News 6. This week, News 6 is brought to you by the 6th graders of Immaculate Conception School in Bellevue, Ohio. Our first story is about a recent News 6 visit to the historic Lyon Village in Bellevue. Troy Miller has that story. Thanks, Darlene. Historic Lyon Village is made up of nine buildings, which reflect the history of our past. News 6 reporter Kristen Schaefer talked with Mrs. Betty Seymour about some of the places in the village. Mrs. Bernice Mittower also talked with us about the early postal service and we visited the village blacksmiths. What are some of the places that make up the village? The church, the Seymour House, and the post office. We also have two log houses, uh, the Bee Breaker Barn, the blacksmith shop, which we will be visiting, and the post office, the Wright House, and the carriage house. What are some of the events that happen here? Well, right now we're planning for the doll and toy show. You probably noticed a lot of dolls around the Wright House. The next event will be the quilt show, April 28th and 29th. We'll have a Founder's Day, an antique car show. We always have flea markets throughout the year. We have uh, Military History Day and Pioneer Craft Days. And then in December to end the year will be Christmas of yesteryear, and that's always held on three days. My name is Bruno Smithauer, and I live out near Republic. I'm curator of this museum. I have been ever since 1968. This is Nevada territorial cover. Before Nevada ever became a state, they had a post office out there and those covers came from there. These are very early New York City. Some of them date back into the 1780s and 1790s. Someone asked about this card. That was the first postal card that the post office department ever put out. And about five or six years ago, I think it was 100 years old, they put out another one. Sometimes it takes longer to to get the shoes hot in cold weather, it takes a little bit longer. You get the shoe all reshaped and uh, new uh, caulks put on there, then you trim the horse's hoof, short, shorten it like you would trim your fingernails, and then you fit the shoe back on the horse to fit the horse's uh, foot. And uh, then you see the holes there. Thanks, Kristen. The Michael Dybert family is building a very unusual home. Although it will have two stories, a full basement, and a two-car garage, one look tells us that this is not an ordinary home. On a recent visit, Mr. Dybert explained to News 6 that he is building a dome home. This is a sphere-shaped structure made up of triangles. Because of its unique design, this type of structure, as well as being resistant to earthquakes, is very energy efficient. The diver home is made up of 10 sides. Because of its dome shape, there is less surface exposed to the elements. This means that less heated or cooled air will be lost. The dome home also contains more area and less space than a conventional home. The, ho the home which the divers hope to finish in the fall will be able to use possible solar action. Although the structure calls for conventional windows, a skylight in the dome lets in solar light, solar light during the day. The Diverts have enjoyed building their new home and are looking forward to lots of space and low-cost heating. Thanks, Stacia. News 6 recently visited the Bellevue Train Museum. It was established in June 1976 by Bill Fearing. The collection began with four cars, and today there are 20 three cars and engines on display. Mr. Fearing talked with News 6 about some of the cars in the museum.
Kids, uh, the baggage car came from the Louisville-Nashville Railroad. The Louisville-Nashville ran mostly from Cincinnati to Birmingham, Alabama, and New Orleans. This particular car is unusual due to the, it still has its original paint job. You are looking what they commonly called a PCC car, President's Commission. There was an advisory commission who built this car as a standard for all city streetcars. And the car was built originally for Cleveland Transit and ran in Cleveland for about 20 years. Then it was sold to the city of Toronto and went to Toronto and ran there for about 10 years and then came back and ran on the Shaker Heights Rapid Transit in Cleveland up until we got it three years ago. The museum was really only going to be this caboose. It was going to be set out on the edge of town and we was going to put a few paper artifacts in it and the old timers were going to come and sit around the stove and that's all we were going to have for a museum. The only trouble is we got a hold of a yellow refrigerator car out there and then we got a hold of two more refrigerator cars and then we decided we better build a museum. Thanks, Cara. This week, New 6 wishes to comment on grades and sports. Here's Andrew Paddock with the New 6 editorial about grade average requirements for playing sports. Thanks, Darlene. The current state requirements allow a student to have three Ds and two Fs and still play sports. But the state board is now studying a proposal to lower the requirement standards. If this proposal passes, a student will be allowed to have four Ds and one F and still play sports. In our sports program at Immaculate Conception, we do not allow students with F averages to participate. If a student receives an F in a major subject, he or she cannot play in any sport until that grade is brought up to a D. Our school administration feels that playing sports is a privilege that comes with education and that the student's education must come first. <coughs> We feel that a student who maintains a higher grade average will be a better team member. Also, if a student is failing a subject, he or she needs to devote more time to studying and cannot afford to spend the many hours in practice that sports require. At our school, we believe that education and sports must go hand in hand. We think the state standards should not be lowered. Thanks, Andrew. That's all for today. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and will join us next week when New 6 will be presented to you by the Sacred Heart School in Fremont, Ohio. New 6 reporters will be visiting a man who does trick shooting with a bow and arrow. They'll explore dungeons underneath the Fremont Courthouse. They'll visit the Dillon home and talk with an archaeologist about how the earth reveals our past. Until then, have a good week and keep up those grades. Thank you.